Hello world and welcome. Today we'll talk about deep deterministic policy gradients and what they are good for in continuous environments. I'm using here the example of the Pendulum uh, OpenAI gym and yeah, let's see how it works. My name is Harris and let's get started. So for more content like this, uh, please hit the subscribe button or leave a like comment there. I would be really happy about it. Thanks a lot. So first of all, um, I'm, I'm importing all the required libraries here, like TensorFlow, Keras, RL, and so on. So for this um, libraries, when necessary for this example, I'm fitting everything in the first place. And to just have an overview of this topic, I just plotted here an example, how to distinguish uh, what are critic actor models and to just uh, make it a little bit more visual. On the left side, you can see the TQN that we were discussing before and the last sections uh, which is basically you have an in input of a um, neural net. You are starting with some state in the very first input and the neural nets are connected to each other. And at the output, you can see the Q value, the sort of quality value of the state action. So the goal is to maximize the Q value, right? And if you are... Um, see on the right side you can see the ddpg the deep deterministic policy gradient and you can see there are two models um, or two networks you can see uh, we have the critic and the actor network on the left side the critic look, uh, networks look like this that you have states and action in the input of the neural net and in the output you can see the q value depending on the state an action pair, right? And if you see on the right side, you have the actor, where you have the inputs on the, uh, are in this case, the states. And the neural network is so connected that on the output, you can see the actions who are determinating through this network. So we need this um, critic actor network here in this case, because it's a continuous environment. The pendulum is a continuous um, environment, not like the card pole or some other open AI uh, gym networks or environments. If you are distinguishing both of them, you can see that, for instance, um, continuous environment is something like this, that you have a self-driving car, right? So this is something which you can compare due to this example. A pendulum is the same continuous. A discrete environment is something like if you're playing check or if you are um, having environments like a maze and in the middle you have a goal and after let's say 200 um, steps, you should reach a goal. So this is some something deterministic, uh, something discrete. Uh, so this is the point, how do you can um, distinguish both of these environments? In this case, we have a continuous pendulum environment. So that's why we are using DDPGs here. So first of all, I'm loading the pendulum um, from the OpenAI gym, where I'm just um, taking the example to just see how much action and how the observation space looks like after this i'm building the actor model because in this case as you can see above we have two networks here that we are building not only one but two so i'm starting here with the actor model um, which has basically a flattened layer it has dense layers fully connected layers with, with the real activation function and at the end I have a linear activation function here. So it has um, only 625 parameters 
after this, I'm building the critical model, the critic model, where you have the action input. So here we have actions, as you can see, and the critic model is here. We have states and actions. That's why I have a state, I have action here, and we have the state and the second row. So I'm flattening everything with this to concatenate the flattened um, observation with the um, action. And after this, the fully connected layers are coming. The activation is real here as well. And in the last phase or in the output layer, we have the linear activation function again. So I plot the summary of the critic network and you can see it has more um, parameters here. So basically um, the actor model is something which is determining the, which determines the action. And the critic network is a little bit you know, bigger, it has more parameters because it's calculating the Q value from the state action pairs. So after I'm doing this here, I'm compiling the agent where first of all, I'm setting up the sequential memory for 100,000 to just remember everything, you know, to each step that it should be um, put in a memory Then afterwards, I'm loading the agent. It's here, the DDPG agent, where I'm um, inserting the parameters like actions, the number of actions, the actor and critic model. I'm inserting the memory as we defined before. And we have the warm, um, the warm up steps, which means that uh, in this case, it's only 100, which means in the first 100 rounds, it's kind of warming up, it don't calculate any weights, it don't update any weights and so on. So I'm putting gamma to 0 0.99 and I'm updating the target on this time. So after this, I'm compiling the agent here with the atom optimizer the clip norms or he's clipping at um, max or min values and I'm using the mean absolute error here to just see how he's performing. So after um, 50,000 steps of training the model or the agent, I'm saving and loading the weights here to just, you know, for further examples to just have the weights loaded to just, you know, to use it again for our examples. So to just visualize the agents and the score here for the agents after um, I'm plotting everything with um, five episodes to just see how the agent after training the model is performing right now. So I'm plotting it and you can see that he's doing really fine. So his goal is to just stay in the vertical phase. He's spinning around, as you can see here, he has to put some momentum to just aim the vertical position here. And he was doing it really fine. You can, of course, plot the scores. And you can see that almost after um, some episodes, he's reaching his goal. So he's really doing a good job here. And yeah, so let me know how you, how you like this video here. If you have some suggestions or some more motivation here, just write me in the chat. If you have some more topics to cover, let me know. And thanks a lot and see you soon.